the No Fate channel checking in and on today's episode I am going to be reviewing Boston's Museum of Fine Arts. Now I do encourage all of you to watch the entire video but for those of you who are only interested in specific sections I have put timestamps below. Before you skip ahead though definitely give this video a like, drop me a comment and hit that subscribe button. Today I'm doing a complete review on Boston's Museum of Fine Arts but there is a ton to talk about before we even go into the museum. Now. First and foremost is parking. Parking in Boston can be super expensive and the Museum of Fine Arts is no different. If you try to use the parking garage, it's going to cost you about 20 plus dollars just for the first two hours. Your best bet is street parking. Now, um, the problem with that is that it is limited and it fills up quick. On Sundays it is free, on Saturdays is probably your second best bet. During the week, and especially when school is in session, that street parking is almost non-existent. Um, and again, it fills up so quickly. Now, if you're already in Boston on vacation, or you live close to Boston, you can of course take the train. The Boston train is known as the T. The best stop is the MFA stop off of the Green Line. You will need the E train, and I'm gonna show you in a moment how close that is. The second stop is off the Orange Line, and I believe that is Ruggles stop off the Orange Line. Another option besides the T to get to the Museum of Fine Arts are Uber and Lyft if you're already in Boston. Also, if uh, you're going to be using the Old Town Trolley to get around Boston and see a number of sites, uh, they have a stop dedicated to the Museum of Fine Arts. So let's talk about one of the most important things when you come to the Museum of Fine Arts, and that of course is cost. What you don't want to do is just show up here, walk in the front door, and pay full price. You never want to do that. The best thing to do is to get a library pass. Uh, the price of admission with a library pass is only $10. Uh, most of the libraries in New England will have library passes. You just need to grab one. And the good thing about the library passes are that they are good for about six months, so you don't have to actually get a specific date. If you know you're going to be going to the Museum of Fine Arts um, in the upcoming months, definitely just pick one up and have it to hold. Um, if you don't live in the area, then you definitely want to reach out to someone who does to get you a library pass. Someone, I don't know, that has a YouTube channel that might be able to hook you up for free um, as an act of kindness. But otherwise, that is your best bet. Another way to save money is the Go City Boston card. Uh, that's a way to save um, when you're doing multiple activities in Boston. So if you're vacationing here um, and you plan to see a number of different sites, that's definitely something that you should consider. Also, children under the age of 18 do get in for free. So that's certainly a perk if you're traveling with your family. Another way to uh, save a bunch of money is to get a membership. Um, for me, the break-even point was about three to four visits, and that was something I just wasn't gonna get done through the year. Um, if you live in the area, or if you know you're gonna be coming here more than two to three times a year, I definitely recommend getting the membership. It comes with a lot of perks, discounts on parking, discounts at the gift shop, at the restaurants that they have here, as well as a number of early admission and free admission to some of their um, exhibits that they have. They oftentimes have um, videos and speakers and um, temporary exhibits that do cost extra money, but you can get in for them for free, again, if you're a member. We are at the Museum of Fine Arts Fenway entrance. The Museum of Fine Arts is massive. We were just at their Huntington entrance, best known for the Native American statue. The Fenway entrance is best known for the baby's heads that are in front. Um, if you come to the Museum of Fine Arts, definitely bring your walking shoes. It is four floors. It has three gift shops and it has four restaurants. So quite large and um, something that people often don't realize until they get here. There are four restaurants inside the Museum of Fine Arts. They all range in price. If you're coming with the family, your best bet is the Garden Cafeteria. They have not only the best prices, but also the best uh, family-friendly options. Keep in mind, you don't actually have to eat inside the Museum of Fine Arts. You can leave the museum and come back in the same day as long as you hold on to your ticket. It is good all day. There are a number of restaurants, uh, both sit-down and quick meals in the, the ranging blocks around the Museum of Fine Arts. Also, if you pack yourself a picnic lunch, probably the cheapest option would be just to go back to your car, grab some food, grab a snack, and head back into the Museum of Fine Arts to wrap things up.
you enjoyed today's review of the Museum of Fine Arts, let me know in the comments below what your favorite piece of artwork is. If you've come this far in the video, then definitely give it a like, hit that subscribe button. As usual, thanks for watching, and don't save anything for the trip back. As the father of a four-year-old with another one due literally any day, I am dedicated to helping other dads who want to be a great father to their children and still accomplish their own personal goals. I provide ideas and insights to save you time and energy, two things that are in short supply for every dad out there. I'll also be taking you inside this dad's tricks, travels, and tribulations. I post new videos every Sunday night, so hit that subscribe button and join this community of dads helping dads. Thanks for watching, and as usual, don't save anything for the trip back.